Hello friends and welcome, I'm VA Adam. In today's video I will be showing you how to fit a hidden Bluetooth stereo to my 1972 Buick Riviera. For those of you that are not familiar with these devices, they connect to the car's speakers and then are hidden away somewhere behind the dashboard. When the car is turned on and the device is powered up, you can connect to it using your phone. You can then stream music to the device and it will play through the car speakers. Although the original radio does work in my Riviera, it's actually an 8 ohm radio, as most from the era were. But the problem is that modern speakers use 4 ohm, and this means that it does put some stress on the radio if you try and run 4 ohm speakers from an 8 ohm head unit, especially if the music is up a bit loud or for any uh, extended period of time. So to reduce the risk and save the stock radio, I'm installing this unit which is designed for modern speakers and therefore 4 ohm. I will of course get the benefit of being able to stream from my phone and I can even stream Absolute Radio 60s. This particular unit that I've got is from a company here in the UK called Classic Car Stereo and I actually saw them at the Classic Car Show at the NEC in November. If you don't want to go to the trouble of installing one of these units then there are other options such as this unit here. I actually used this successfully and it simply plugs into the cigarette lighter. You then just connect your phone to it using Bluetooth and the unit actually broadcasts a sort of mini FM uh, stereo system for your existing car radio and you just tune your car radio to the same frequency. It actually works surprisingly well and for the money and the ease these are really really good. The unit also gives you two USB ports so you can charge your phone and um, even charge a passenger's phone if you want to. So let's take a look at the layout of this unit and this really helpful diagram which will help us refer to some of the connectors on the unit. I have checked with the supplier and I have confirmed that the unit does need permanent and ignition 12 volts so it will actually need both. I also only have one front speaker so I'm just going to be connecting up the left channel of the unit to the front speaker and then I'll just be capping the other cables off. I do have two rear speakers though so both of those can be linked up. So after some discussion on v8buick.com we were actually looking at running in a new power supply from the starter, creating a new bus and drawing the power off of that. But after looking around the car a little bit more and referring to the workshop manual, I've been able to find a much easier solution thanks to the original spec of my particular Riviera. So unusually, my Riviera doesn't have power windows. I believe that as a result of this, there are no rear cigarette lighters. The connector for the rear lighters, however, is there, and it's here at the front of the car, and it's currently unused. So let's have a look at the layout of the wiring under the dash to get a bit of a better idea about what's going on. So um, ignore this mess over to the right here. Um, these are some flasher modifications that somebody installed at some point, but here is the fuse box, and we can see that there's a pink cable here coming from the ignition. So this cable has already been spliced into here, and I will have to check that this uh, splicing is safe, but this runs up and all it does is power the small lamps which are on these aftermarket gauges. Therefore there's very little current draw from these lamps and very little current draw on the cable at the moment. The, unit will, the new unit will hardly draw any power and, um, over its ignition supply, and so this will be more than safe to use. So if we trace the pink cable around, we can see that it goes to this white block connector here, which is on the left-hand side of the car, just above the left kick panel. You can see that none of the connectors are currently being used, so there's no extra draw on this cable, um, apart from the lamps in the aftermarket gauges. We can therefore safely just connect straight into this terminal block, and that's our ignition power sorted. Just to let you know that the orange and black cable here on the right is actually for the powered bench seat, and this is a permanent life. Now that unused connector that I mentioned earlier for the rear cigarette lighters is just here. You can see it's a completely unused connector block. Each pair on the left and the right are permanent live positive and negative. So this is super useful so we can just use this connector block for the permanent 12 volt power supply. The rear speakers are aftermarket and somebody had already installed them when I purchased the car. I have actually changed the speakers themselves but the wiring is still here and it runs down the driver's side so the cables for the rear speakers are on this side too. All that they need is just pulling back from where the current radio is in the middle of the car. 
That only leaves the connectors for the front center speaker, which is here. You can see that there's red and black cable that runs down here. They're then spliced into the factory blue cables and run into the radio. So to keep this as simple as possible, I'm just gonna make up some new positive and negative runs of cables that will go from the new unit and then just have connectors on the end to go into the speaker. And we'll just disconnect the ones that are currently here and just wrap those away out of sight. So let's review. We have our ignition live here, our permanent live here, the rear speaker cables can be pulled back to here, and we're running a new pair of cables from here to the front speaker. This will mean that not only does the install not interfere with any of the factory wiring, but it can actually be reverted back to the original radio very easily if required. I've now pulled back the rear speaker cable and installed some new spade connectors on the end ready for install. This is the unit, but we will just put that to one side for the minute. And here's the power supply blocks. This black cable is unused, so I've just crimped it off so that it doesn't cause any problems. Here is the connector, and we can refer to the pinouts on the unit. Here is the ignition 12 volt, and I've already installed a connector on the end. I always solder and crimp my connections just to make sure they're really strong. This connector will end up in the white terminal block just here. At the other end of the block is the permanent 12 volt, which is shown here as connectors 1 and 7 on the diagram. That just goes to this power supply unit, and then that runs out to the positive and the negative, which I have, again, already installed connectors on. These will be connected to the terminal block that was for the rear cigarette lighters that we saw earlier. The other connectors are for the rear left and right speakers, and one is for the front speaker. As mentioned, I'll only be using one of the front speaker connectors, so I've just put some heat shrink on the unused cables, just so they're safe. And the front speaker cable that I'm using has been connected to our new positive and negative that will run across to the front speaker in the middle of the car. I'll put some connectors on the end of this cable once it's been cut to length and it's ready to be installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to work from left to right. We're going to connect everything up, secure it in place and of course test along the way when we can. So let's have a look at where the unit will actually physically sit under the dash. So as this is an American car, there's loads of space and there's a very convenient void here which is just in the right place for how we need to connect this up. Although you can, I'm not actually going to screw this in place, I'm simply just going to use some cable ties to hold it in and some Velcro on the power supply. So most of the unit is installed now, the rear speaker connectors have been plugged in, I've put some heat shrink over them just to make sure that no shorting happens, and the speaker cable can just be tucked down here into the recess behind the driver's kick panel. The power supply unit is attached to the main unit by some Velcro to help keep it in place, as I mentioned earlier, and the main unit is just held in with a zip tie to keep it securely in place. I might need to put some felt or some foam under here if there's any rattling, but for now I've just got it secured in place with the zip tie. The cables are all run off to the right here, where they need to be. I've zip tied the power cables to the parking brake release cable to keep it as neat as possible, and the rear cigarette lighter terminal is just here, which was the permanent 12 volt, and that's what that, those cables are connected to. For reference, the orange cables are the positive and the white cables are the negative. I bought the rear speaker cables under this gap and zip tied them to the light connector so that they're safely up and away out of the heat of the light. For the front speaker, I'm going to be routing it through the same path as the light cables go, just to make it as easy as possible. So we can see that it goes along here, it goes through this wire holder, and it goes up over the steering column where the existing cable loom is going and then it's going to be run all the way across there and up to the speaker and connected in. So here are the front speaker cables now in place. They've been cut to length and had connectors put on the end and they're completely ready to be installed. I'm just going to have to connect these to the front speaker and then everything should work. And here are the cables connected to the front speaker with the cables neatly run across and everything zip tied in. The old connectors have been wound up and zip tied back here just to securely keep them out of the way and if they ever need to be reconnected or reinstated through the original radio then they can be really easily. So I've done some testing along the way but everything's installed now. I've switched the car to ignition, you can see that the unit is powered up. 
It's already connected to a phone and it's got some music playing. So the phone's controlling everything, you can just skip track, you can just adjust the volume, everything is done from the phone. And the head unit itself is just called CCS Audio, as you can see on the phone here. Super nice and super simple. So thanks so much for watching, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and until next time, this is VA Adam, signing off.